Hi guys, so in the previous lesson we saw that if you have a number like this, which is called a decimal, you can convert that into a scientific notation. And so we said that we always want the decimal to be after the first number, so it'll be 3,248345. And so the decimal was over here, and now it's moved three places to the left. And so because the decimal moved three places to the left, we would have to say times 10 over here to the positive 3. See, because if the decimal moves left, then it was positive. But now, what if I give you a scientific number? What if I give you this? Then what that means is that we're going to have to try to turn this number back into a decimal number. All right, so I'm going to write this number over here. Now, if you're timesing a number by 10 to the power of 3, what that means is that you are timesing it, whoops, timesing it by 10 three times. So, what is the number 5, or 5,4 times 10? Well, well done if you said 54. Now, what is the number 5,4 times 100? Well, that's 540. So, as we times by 10, the decimal has to move one place to the right. And if we times by 100, then it would have to move two places. So if we're timesing by 10 three times, then your decimal needs to move three times. And so you end up with a number of 3248,345, which is what we started out with at the beginning. Here's another one. So here we're going to times by 10 eight times. The decimal is going to have to move to the right eight times. And so let's move it eight times. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can have your decimal there. So if there's any empty spots, then you fill those up with zeros. And so there's the number. Now, because the decimal's at the end, you don't have to really write that in. So the answer is two, three, oh, four, eight, two, zero, zero, zero. Now, let's say this was a question I gave you in the last lesson, and I asked you to put it in decimal notation. Well, what you would say, you would say 2,30482. You would then realize that there is zeros at the end, so you would ignore those. You would then say times 10. You would then see, okay, so the decimal was over here. Now, all of a sudden, it's moved backwards eight places. And so the decimal moved eight places to the left. And so you would have used that little rule that we usually write up here. And so you would have put an eight. And so we can see that we can switch between the two different methods, decimal and scientific. Okay, so with this one over here, we've got a times 10 to the 5. <clears throat> so we're going to move the decimal, or we're going to make the number 5 times bigger. So we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4. And then there's going to be an empty spot. So it's going to be 30043. And then there's that empty spot over there, which you'll just fill it up with a zero and so there's the number so here's three that we can try i mean four so the first one is two comma four times ten to the three so what that means is that the decimal will move three places to the right so it'll go one two three and so you'd fill up zeros in any of the empty places and then your decimal is now at the end and so the number is two thousand four hundred times ten to the four so we're going to move it four places one two three four we can fill up zeros in these empty places and so we'll end up with 30600. Here we're going to move it six places. So it would go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you'd fill all the empty spaces with zeros. Here we're only going to move it three places. And so that's going to be one, two, three. And so you end up with one, zero, zero, three. Then your decimal is over there. So then this is comma six, eight. And so there's your answer. And so that's all I'm going to look at in this lesson, guys. Just a, sl a slow introduction to converting scientific numbers to decimal numbers.